So, uh, he, uh, his uh, credits, he's been on uh, MTV's Half Hour Comedy, he's been on Comedy Central, he's a very funny man, he's a friend of mine, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Von Ogle. You guys are looking up here going, boy, that Bond sure looks familiar. Yeah, and it's not because you've seen me on MTV and Comedy Central and stuff like that. It's because I have a very common look nowadays. I have the bald guy with the long hair look. Yeah. Yeah. You know, whenever I go to different towns, people feel obligated to come up and tell me who I look like. Yeah, people have come and go, oh, you look like Michael Bolton. Oh, you look like Neil Young. One night somebody goes, dude, you look like Riff Raff, the butler from Rocky Horror Picture Show. The other day I woke up and my hair was all standing up and then like it does sometimes. And I stretch it in front of the mirror. I realized, man, if my hair was purple, I'd look like one of those troll dolls. <laughs> yeah. 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 Weirdest comparison I ever had in my looks is so weird you won't believe this. About six weeks ago in LA, like right where you're sitting, there was a woman that was laughing hysterically even when I wasn't doing anything. If I had to stop the show, I'm like, lady, what is your problem? She looks me right in the eyes and goes, you look just like the lion from the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. <laughs> 
And if you guys are anything like me, you probably spent like 20, 30 bucks just picking out all the junk food. And another 20, 30 bucks going to the ride, getting dizzy and throwing up. <laughs> it's kind of like bulimics on holiday. <laughs> oh, and don't the carnies that run the ride, don't they feel the utmost incompetence in you? <laughs> These guys make Larry, Daryl, and Daryl look like rocket scientists, don't they? Up in Oregon, a couple of them were working on the drive shaft of the Ferris wheel. I guess they were trying to lubricate the axle or something, so one of them just hocked the loogie on and goes, okay, give the world! <laughs> but yeah, I kind of laughed at that. I did that joke one night, some people from Buckeye were in here. They got all excited. They're like, well, did it work? <laughs> uh, another place I did that was kind of scary not too long ago. I had to spend a week in El Paso, Texas. Yeah. A lot of cowboys down there. We had any cowboys in here tonight? Woo! Alright, are you a real cowboy? Uh-huh. And you're one of those fake cowboys eating that picante sauce from New York City, aren't you, dude? Yeah. Uh, uh, the cowboys on El Paso. I did not know this. If you are a cowboy, maybe you knew this. El Paso is where they make all the boots. Tommy Lama, just on the all other factories down there. All I ever had is tennis shoes. Well, uh, while I'm here in El Paso, maybe I'll get myself a nice pair of cowboy boots. So I went into a Tony Lama boot store. Picked up a pair of white and black cowboy boots, $789. Boots, they just flipped on your feet and you couldn't even pump them up for nothing. $789, <laughs> these things have better be made on a spotted owls or something. And if I did pay $789 for a pair of boots and my mom found out about it, she'd run a piece of yarn up my pant legs and hook the two together so I wouldn't lose them. <laughs> I figured that's what the little loops on the side are for. <laughs> uh, but all this traveling around, I've been doing a lot of flying this year. Now, first, this is kind of neat, kind of exciting. I'm sure some of you guys do a lot of traveling by plane. Uh, and, uh, the first is kind of neat, but it gets a little boring after a while, doesn't it? you got to find little things to lighten up the flight on the airplane. Next time you're on a plane, do this, do this. This is fun. Wait for somebody to fall asleep on the airplane. <laughs> Trade seats are sitting next to them. Put one of these on. <laughs> they go like this. What? Shock 
glasses. <laughs> well, what are those doing out here? Well, the kids want to play a game, so we play quarters. <laughs> Susie got the worm, yeah! Oh. Well, it's a nice looking couples out here tonight. Uh, did anybody have to get a babysitter in order to come out tonight? Who's watching them? We don't know. You don't know? <laughs> oh, did you have a good time in Acapulco at Christmas? Okay. <laughs> babysitter? What's that? Yeah. Oh. So what did you said the neighbor is? Neighbor? See, you're a smart lady. That's good. Got somebody neutral. My parents always did something stupid. So I had three older sisters, one older brother, always left my older brother Randy in charge. Little Charlie Manson, psycho dude, man. <laughs> the minute that door would close, they'd be sitting on my face, farting. <laughs> Holding me by my ankles with my head in the toilet, flushing it with his foot. <laughs> or else they'd pin me down on the floor, grab my wrist, and hit me with my own hand, going, Why are you hitting yourself? <laughs> Stop! <laughs> lady wasn't invented when I was a kid. <laughs> oh. Oh. Now, I want to see if this happened to you, because uh, my brother, he used to love to play this, and I want to see if any of you guys had an older brother that babysat for you. I want to see if this happened, I think this is the instinct in older brothers. My brother used to love to play the pendulous spit game with me. <laughs> uh, he knows what it is. Uh, oh, yes, no, yes. Those who don't know what this game is. He can verify. This is where your brother gets you on your back, sits on your chest, puts his knees on your arms, leans over your face, and lets a big wad of spit come out of his mouth. But just before he touches your face, he sucks it. That's the word. If you do it, you have it done to you. Done to you. And they'll make it suspenseful too, won't they? They'll shake their head a little bit. They goof up and it breaks and all that, they're like, oops. <laughs> uh, wouldn't it be crazy to work as an adult? Can't you see you going to work like tomorrow sitting on your boss's chest? <laughs> I'm so glad my parents went away on a two week vacation. They couldn't leave me alone with Randy for that long. So they decided to leave me at my grandma's house. I was all excited, like, yay, I get to go to grandma's house. <laughs> so she sat on my chest going, why are you hitting yourself? <laughs> Now, do you guys remember that cool, cool day when we were left home without any brothers and sisters or no babysitter, just you and Hal? Yeah. I learned a lot that day. I learned that Hershey's baking cocoa, the can says it's chocolate, and it looks like chocolate. This stuff is black powdered crap, doesn't it? Yeah. But then there's that candy bar in the medicine cabinet. Looks like chocolate. Tastes like chocolate. The rest of the evening is kind of a blur. <laughs> I did that one thing we all did. I bet you, you did this. I can tell. You look like you did. Well, we're left home alone. Did you go into your parents' bedroom and go through their underwear drawers and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Really? It was so cool. I was finding things I didn't know what they were. I was finding bras and panties and garter belts. I was like, cool. I can't wait to see what mom has on her side of the room. Yeah. <laughs> Noises. Arr, arr. If you play with it too long, your arm gets kind of numb. So <laughs> oh, cool to be back in Phoenix, man. This is great. You know, Phoenix. I, I didn't get to spend any time here this winter. Was it nice? Uh, the, see, Phoenix. This is where you want to be in the winter. Guess where I spent January this year? Michigan, Minnesota, Illinois. Upper Peninsula of Michigan, minus 30 every day. Minus 30. I drove by the bank, they didn't even have one of those digital thermometers. They just had a big witch's tit hanging out there. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get that joke, man. That was really cool. Oh, yeah. uh, but back in Phoenix, man. <laughs> you know, whenever I go someplace different, I tell them I live in Phoenix and how hot it gets here. People always tell me, oh, but it's a dry. <laughs> I sold my oven stick in here for eight hours, pal. See how you like it, you know? 
Uh, now, did you guys have to put up with the snowbirds this year? Yeah. yeah. See, I didn't care for these snowbirds when I first moved to Phoenix. You know, I didn't care for them that much. But you know, having to sit down and talk to these old people, they're actually very interesting people. They've done a lot in life, and I learned to respect them just a little bit more. But if they respect these old people for the most in life, they're the only ones I know of that will go into a Denny's in broad daylight, not drunk, and eat. <laughs> We've never been there before midnight, not blitzed out of our gorge that way. Uh, maybe they think that Denny's does something out of Star Trek and shoots a little tractor beam that pulls into drunks after midnight. Because Denny's does cater to the drunks, do they not? Yeah. You can prove it just by looking at the menus, can't you? Do they have words? No. They have pictures. <laughs> if you get points, you can eat at Denny's. We've got some pretty dumb people down here in Phoenix ourselves, don't we? Yeah. The I dumbest did. thing I ever seen in my life happened out at my house. I live out by Metro. Got on my truck one day and I heard this sound. <laughs> Around the corner of my house, here's a grown man and woman <laughs> with an empty bird cage standing under a tree with a little parakeet up in the tree. And you're like, <laughs> a little parakeet is looking at him going, yeah, right. <laughs> Flipping on the human. <laughs> you know, I guess I missed this little wilderness tip on mutual Omaha's wild kingdom. And now Jim will attempt to capture the wild Indian rhino. <laughs> if this had worked, you would have seen me on the sidewalk with a 38 double D bra. <laughs> I should have been used to the cold weather because I am from the Midwest originally. I'm from Wisconsin. Oh, she said? Go sign of the cow. <laughs> from a big town or small town? Small? Me too, I'm from one of those 50 person cow towns up in northern Wisconsin. Anybody explain to us why when city people drive by a cow pasture they get that uncontrollable urge to roll down their windows and go, Box of bugs go inside, get stuck to the wall. 
Let's have the army build bigger versions of these, and we'll just have them as convenience stores with help wanted signs in the windows. <laughs> just set them up all over over there. Uh, uh, yeah, that's cool. I'm having a good time. I should have brought this up earlier. The cowboy might get a kick out of this. Do you know what the cowboys in El Paso wanted me to do with them when I was down there? <laughs> Not that, that's in Wyoming. <laughs> No, when I was in El Paso, the cowboys there, they wanted me to go out to their ranch and eat Rocky Mountain oysters. Yeah. Yeah. See, when I found out what these things were, <laughs> the first thought that went through my head was who discovered these were good? <laughs> this was one hungry dude. <laughs> I mean, I could see walking down the road and seeing a big red apple hanging in a tree and have my mouth start to water. But I have never looked at the back end of a bowl and gone, lunch! <laughs> so you tried them, dude, huh? What's your name? Ryan. Ryan? Hungry Ryan. Uh, does somebody make these for you, Ryan? You go pluck them yourself. <laughs> where'd, where'd you get them at? Uh, Minnesota. Minnesota? Was it a restaurant or something? Straight off the farm. Straight off the farm. Right on. Woo! Yeah. Kind of like nut sushi in a little time. So, so, what farm was it? Like your grandpa or something like that? Your grandpa. Did he know what he was doing? That's good. You don't want to risk getting a bad nut somewhere. <laughs> Guy in the picture's a story. You eat your nuts, sonny. When I was a kid, we didn't have nuts. Yeah. Uh, so you like them, huh? But see, I, should, I, would, I think I will try these. I'm pretty adventurous in new type foods. I think I'll ask this guy. A lot of you know it if you know the answer. You can yell at it. I will direct it to Ryan since he does seem to be the nut expert of the group today. <laughs> What do they taste like? Um, chicken. Did you hear that, Ryan? Somebody over here thinks they taste like chicken. <laughs> I don't agree with that. No, I don't. No, no they taste like chicken. Don't you think we see some bull McNuts at McDonald's right now? <laughs> Me and Ryan would be down at KFC getting a bucket of balls for everybody. <laughs> I'll be cruising a bear with dick on a stick next year. trying to get you to try something new, don't they? Oh, it tastes just like chicken, tastes just like chicken, tastes just like chicken. <laughs> Next time I'm with a girl, hey honey, tastes just like chicken. <laughs> were, you drunk, were you drunk when you tried these, Ryan? No? Just young and stupid. Huh? <laughs> Most people try when they're drunk, and nothing worse than being drunk and waking up with nuts in your mouth. <laughs> Usually the girls laugh at that one a lot more than the guys. <laughs> Uh, let me get a feel for you guys. You're obviously from the Midwest. Uh, I grew up in Wisconsin. Place where it got freezing cold outside. By a round of applause, how many people here spent some time as a kid someplace where it got freezing cold outside? <laughs> so that's probably a pretty safe bet to guess that quite a few. You got your tongue stuck to something metal while you're doing that too, huh? Anybody get their tongue stuck to something really weird? <laughs> that was made of metal, Ryan. <laughs> Brian being drug around the cow patch going, Stop! <laughs> Baby, these don't taste like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you get stuck to, Ryan? Uh, I, I never got stuck to. Larry. Uh, that that <laughs> sort of thing was all enough for you as a kid. So I won't be like to hear the replace maybe the good one. Because I won't make fun of you because I got mine stuck to a really dumb place myself. <laughs> I got mine stuck to a tractor. <laughs> Nothing more embarrassing than being a little kid outside with your face up against a John Deere going, Excuse me. I'm silly, can you go get my mom? <laughs> Unless your brother finds you first, now you're out there with your pants around your ankles. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Get away from me, Ryan. <laughs> They know you well, don't they? <laughs> oh, yeah. And when we were kids in this afternoon, what's the first thing your mom did when she found out about this? You know, she'd get a cup of hot water, come call you out, take you back now, try to calm you down. Nowadays, what's the first thing your mom does when she finds out about this? Oh, she runs against the video camera. <laughs> okay, pull his pants down and drive the tractor down the driveway. <laughs> nah, act like you don't see him. $10,000, it's all ours. <laughs> Well, these guys are going, hey! <laughs> uh, I like to ask the word place. I want to see if anybody can ever top this. Nobody has it. Actually, witnesses as a kid. Me and my best friend were outside playing. We went with merry around to get little booths. 
and while it was moving, my friend stuck his tongue to the metal in front of his face, and he was like, stop! You guys, stop! He wasn't my best friend, I didn't like seeing him suffer like that, so I tripped him. <laughs> Kind of look like little snakes get hanging off the merry-go-round. Ooh, everybody's toes are curled up. Now we know how Ryan's bowl felt, don't we? <laughs> this is one of the predicaments only humans get into. We've never seen a cow down by the barn going, mm. <laughs> <laughs> All the other cows pulling on its head, squirting milk on its tongue during the bottom. And why do kids do this in the first place? You guys all know why, it's because a parent or an authority figure told us not to, that's the go-ahead, it must be great! <laughs> so if I'm someplace cold and I see a bunch of kids outside playing, having a good time, and I'm feeling kind of ornery, <laughs> I'll go up to, like, <laughs> the flagpole, and I'll announce real loud, Hey, you cats! Don't lick this flagpole. <laughs> then you leave, you come back ten minutes later, it will look like a no-pest strip. <laughs> Then you pull their pants down and leave. It's great. <laughs> That's embarrassing you're gonna happen to you. This is embarrassing. You're probably have to you. Ever been to check online at the grocery store? Or you wait in line to like see a moving or lots of people around you? And you think that you're gonna like break wind. <laughs> but you're not real concerned at first. You think it's gonna be one of those stealth ones that nobody will be able to detect. <laughs> and then, and then it comes out more like a scud. <laughs> I like like I caught somebody doing it, I know they've done it, there's no denying it. So I'm just apologizing and even at that, they try to hide it by doing stupid things like squeaking their tennis shoes on the floor. <laughs> well, once I cough afterwards, oh, doesn't this disguise it? Like, <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I got a frog in my throat. <laughs> well, that's been dead when I can't stay in there. Doesn't it? Couples out here, right? That's cool to see. Is that your girlfriend or your wife, Ryan? <laughs> no, you had to look at her first. I'll see what you did. Okay. Oh. I hope you guys are having a good time. Like to see this. I don't have a girlfriend. I don't have a wife. No, only I'm a total loser. I was married once. I was married uh, ten years ago. I was only married for four. Yeah. Found out four years is also the exact same amount of time it takes a person to work two jobs or put your wife through school to get their degree before they leave. Oh, so you know that trick, huh? I don't really consider it a marriage. I can consider it a student loan that never got paid back. You know? uh, I get a lot of flack from my mom over this guy. I do have the three sisters, one brother. They're all married, all have kids. I'm the last one left. So my mom is always bugging me. She's like, Bon, when are you going to meet a nice girl, settle down, have a family? I'm like, well, Mom, I'm looking, but I just don't know if there's a girl out there for me. She's, oh, fine. For every man, there is a woman. I'm like, yeah, Ma. Some Mormon's probably running around with mine in his herd. <laughs> you guys don't got Mormons in here tonight, do you? <laughs> well, you don't want to do that joke in Utah. <laughs> they will wait for you outside the club with little book bags they carry and beat you up. <laughs> I made a run for it, but they chased me down in their schwins. <laughs> I finally got away by throwing cigarettes and coffee at him. Ah! Your mom have dumb sayings like that for everything? Oh, for every man there is a woman. My mom had a saying like that for everything. The best one she had is all three of my sisters were pregnant at the same time. So just say what it is, she thought with, Well, there must be something in the air. <laughs> yeah, Ma. <laughs> their legs. <laughs> Put a belt around their knees and get them a little epidemic in the bud, huh, Ma? <laughs> uh, so I gotta get going here, my time's about up. I'm gonna do one more little thing before I leave. Uh, about a year ago, my house here in Phoenix, I put one of those jacuzzi hot tub spas in here. And those things are great, I love them, but I did learn there are some do's and don'ts for the men in a jacuzzi. And I have a little thing I refer to as my male spa etiquette test. I have three questions with three responses each about how the men respond to these questions. You ladies kind of tell what kind of scum came here tonight, okay? So guys, this is your chance to whoop and holler and cheer and yell. When you hear a response you really like, just let it go, okay? Yeah! So you guys are looking at me like the Energizer Rabbit's gonna come through here any second. <laughs> I think Ryan will lead him up, won't you, Ryan? Big guy, yeah! Okay, act like your mom just picked you a big old plate of nuts for breakfast, okay? So here we go, guys, listen up. We're starting off question number one. Men, if you're sitting in the hot tub with a well-endowed young female, it's acceptable to A, 
act like a seal and juggle her boobs on your nose. She kind of liked that, Ryan. <laughs> B, stand up and offer to let her meet Wally the water weasel. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> or C, act like you're drowning and use her boobs as a flotation device. <laughs> Oh, it's kind of a toss between the weasel and sea on that one, I think. Okay, question number two, guys. And if you feel the urge to pass gas while sitting in the hot tub, A, go ahead and do it with all those bubbles. They'll never know. Some experience over there, I think, huh? B, cough. Or C, sit on an air jet and try to block it. Oh, they're going D, all of the above. Okay, last question, guys. Many of you feel an erection coming on while sitting in the hot tub. A, claim to be a submarine and float to the top yelling, a periscope. <laughs> B, use it to point out interesting features about your hot tub. <laughs> or C, stand up and announce real loud. Hey, you girls! Don't lick this flagpole. <laughs>